On last week's Your Evolution episode, we focused on the important topic of men and mental health. On this week's episode, we focus on women and body image. This is a huge topic that affects so many people, both male and female, but we've had two really courageous women come forward to tell us their powerful story about overcoming body weight issues. Those two ladies are Laura Hawkins from Ballock and Donna McCafferty from Dumbarton. These are two powerful stories of people who have went through a real transformational journey in order to overcome body weight issues. I'm sure many people out there, male and female, can relate to this. We're going to get into it now, but if you're liking the content, please click the subscribe button. Enjoy the episode and thanks again. Donna McLaverty was in the same year at high school as myself and Alan, but we had no idea what she was going through as a teenager and how things progressively got worse through her 20s. Donna suffered from body image issues and an eating disorder which left her weak, frail and ultimately hospitalised. It's been a long road to recovery and thankfully she's in much better health now. But Donna has been very open in sharing her story to help other women and men learn from her experiences and to give some hope to someone who may be dealing with a condition like anorexia or bulimia right now. So obviously we've been talking beforehand um, and we're here to talk a little bit about body image and I suppose some of the, the challenges that um, people experience. Mm -hmm. You know, on a daily basis at times, um, and I'm keen to hear about when did some of the challenges that you had, when did they begin to happen? Right, well, it did start at an early age, like in high school, in, but it wasn't bad. But it was like probably what some like, girls are going through the now, where they are comparing themselves to other girls. Like in high school, for instance, if I was talking to other lasses, I'd be like, oh, they're looking at my pores, or they're looking at some sort of flaw. Mm -hmm. And I would always scrutinise them and want to be like them, and mm -hmm. oh, it was it was just horrible. Like there was there was loads, but I try and I try and not think about it too much. Obviously, now that I'm better, as I get into my twenties, it was my full twenties where I never ate. Like there was a I don't know how long it was like a can of coke that I would just survive on. I had two jobs, and um, I, it, I I get really really skinny. But see the girls, I was. Like looking at it, try and be, they were probably like the way I am now, mm -hmm. right? But so I was, I was losing weight. I was what I thought a skinny was perfect. Yeah. That I was going to feel just like better if I get really, really skinny. So obviously mid twenties, like say for instance, I got like a curry and naan bread. Mm -hmm. I would just I'd chew it and I'd let it get to the back of my throat, and then I spit it into the bag that the delivery came in. Wow. Next to my couch, like just. Mm -hmm. And it was just, that was normal for me to just do that. I would exercise. If I never exercised, um, I wouldn't go the next day. And obviously I had a young son. Couldn't take him places because I didn't exercise the night before. So when I think back of all that, it's just the, the time that I wasted, my whole 20s. Started fixing myself when I was like 32, 33. So I'm glad that, and obviously I'm nearly 30 now, so I'm, I'm enjoying my 30s, but mm -hmm. I wish I could have enjoyed my 20s. How, how? I can't remember anything good, mm -hmm. really. It all just was a focus on how I looked. Like, I mean, I looked at myself and thought I was like fat every day. Mm -hmm. And I was, when I look back at forties, I wasn't fat. I was like ill. Mm. But how? I mean, during that time, then it sounds like you feel that those were wasted years. But how? Oh, definitely. How, how bad did it actually get? Oh, really? But well. I was walking, it was a nice day, and I, obviously I used to like, walk to work for my first job, and then I'd get home and walk to my second job, because I thought, that's calories. I drank my can of Coke. I'd go there, and I'd walk over to work, and I was walking over one day, and I felt ill. I felt as if I was going to faint. My pal that I worked with, she was with me. And she looked at me, and she's like, are you all right? And I was like, but this was, see, when I felt that way, if my belly rumbled, or like, I felt like sweaty, my back was dripping, that was good for me. There were signs that my body was losing weight. That, I loved that, and I was like, no, I'm fine. I went to work, done my work, crawled into my house that night and just fell in my room, and my mum came up, and um, she obviously phoned an ambulance and stuff, so 
I went to the hospital and the, the, the ambulance woman, she's like, uh, like, look at the size of her. I can remember her saying that. I was just ill. I had, that was me. That was it. So you got me. seriously ill during this bad. particular episode? Aye, bad. And, but that was obviously, I remember, but I'd started probably when I was 14, 15. So mm-hmm. I was mid-20. Well, no, I was like, actually, I think I was 31 or something when that happened to the hospital. Right. So you've got to remember, that's years. It took me years to be like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are not that lucky to, that it's years. That, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Because I, I thought as the years went by, I was fine. I'm, I'm all right, I can do this forever. Because... You know, you've, you do hear our stories where girls are in hospital getting on a drip at this point, and mm-hmm. you know. But so I got to hospital and they referred me to a dietitian and stuff, and I thought, right, I'm going to need to lie to this dietitian what I eat. She's going to look at me and know that, and nobody's going to tell me what I can eat. I think it's things that happen in your life and all. Like I was, it was quite stressful parts like in my life at this point. I had to get a grip of that first. Do you think was there emotional stuff going on, like Aye. maybe things happening in your life mm-hmm. with relationships or job and all that sort of stuff? And that was then things that, things that are happening now, yep. but I can handle it now Aye. because it's it's in your it's your head. Like your head is done. Mm-hmm. Like when you're doing this, like you, how, like and this is what I'm saying. Like obviously, I could I never enjoyed my twenties because all I was focusing on was what I was eating and calories. I could tell you calories and anything, yep. but now I don't care about calories, mm-hmm. obviously. So, so just take me back then, we had that episode where, you know, you were hospitalised, obviously you'd, you'd lost a lot of weight, like, where did you get to, like, weight-wise, before I think we'd spoken about I, it? I remember, I was, right, so I got to six stone, I remember that, I remember 5.12, but I did lose weight after 5.12, but after that I didn't weigh myself, because mm-hmm. it was just by how much my bones were sticking out, or, like, if I put a pair of jeans on, it was how they, did they slip down on me, because if size fours were kind of alright on me, I, I was alright. Size sixes, if they fell down, that's good, that's great. Wow. But this is what I mean, like, I was looking at girls with figures like mine and out and wanting to be like them. Mm-hmm. I totally destroyed my body. I actually ruined my body. Mm-hmm. I ruined it like it was... That I had a picture that I had got sent last week and that was the worst picture. That I, Like, obviously, I've, I've seen loads of pictures, but that one I had never seen. And I was looking at it thinking, fucking hell, like... That's, it was sad to see. Mm-hmm. It was really sad. Obviously, you kind of had that moment, you hit rock bottom. What mm. changed thereafter? Like, what were the things that be- you began to uh, focus on that slowly but surely helped you get better? Like, I can't say one thing, because like I said, once you hit rock bottom, there is only one way. Up. You know? Like, so I think it was just slowly just thinking, I can't do this to myself anymore. Like, uh, I was just thinking back, like, things maybe that I... I've never done because I was too focused in no leaving my front door because I'd never done exercises or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was starting to like my hair. My hair was like really dry. My hair was just lifeless, right? It was, it was falling out and everything. So I was like, I think I just looked at myself and was like, "You're a mess." Something I, I genuinely don't know where it was that clicked in my head. To but I can remember just thinking to myself, "Right, I need, I, that's it. I need to stop doing this to myself." My son was getting older as well. And that's the last thing you want to know is, I think he was hitting his teens as well, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, nah, this isn't it. Imagine I had a girl. It happens to boys as well, mm-hmm. but imagine if I'd have been throwing that on my daughter, like, so I was thinking, well, my son's not any different. Mm-hmm. What if I pass this on to him? I'd never even ate a dinner with him. Wow. Well, obviously, when he was like two or three, mm-hmm. I'd sit and maybe pick it so that it looked like I was eating. And I was just like, like something's got to change here. But obviously, I tried, didn't do it, tried didn't do it. So it took a few attempts, there was a few blips, like, okay. you know what I mean, I think it took a year before I was just, I started to see an improvement. I think, I think that's a really powerful thing to be able to pass on to people, is that through the course of their, you know, through the course of getting into quite a dysfunctional place, that it aye. takes time to roll back and to find it's your feet again. Aye, but this is what I think as well though, like, there's things, there's challenging things in life to know. I would never... I've got a total different mindset as mm-hmm. to how I would handle things now and and I just and it's sad because I just wish I was like that in my twenties. I look mm-hmm. back and I just ruined my twenties and my teenage years as well. I should have been enjoying them. Mm-hmm. I say to my son, enjoy your teenage years, like because I did not There'll be other people out there who this will be resonating with, you know, like and obviously there's varying extremes of eating disorders and mm. being really body conscious and stuff, but what would you say if somebody out there who might be going through 
the same thing or even what would you say to yourself back then? I would just say like just try just try and change because you're going to look at yourself one day and say you look good but I just would say to them you are going to get through this like so do it through just try and date them out and you will see the improvement and like it might take a year but then you'll be like even if you don't want to date them out just try just mm-hmm. try and change it because you will look back and then you will okay. look at yourself and know that you, you're better and you look great is there any um is there any particular like practices or things that you would recommend what did you do what sort of stuff just well started um just eating a wee bit more it's getting a relationship with food again as well. Yeah. Because well, yeah, my taste buds, like, they were gone. Wow. Like, I couldn't eat. Um, so I was just trying to find food again, like, what do you like? And um, Establishing, like, a healthy routine with your food and stuff. I, I just take it as it comes, like, just with food. If I'm hungry, I'll eat. I don't have, like, a special mm-hmm. diet or I'll... Like eat a salad because I ate that pizza last night. Yeah. I don't. I don't do that anymore. Been there and done that. I. I just don't. Don't do it. Don't count calories. I don't. Uh, I'm not obsessed with exercising. But when I started, when I got to like eight stone, I started doing like just small weights because you've lost your figure. Like I was in my th- early thirties, and I, before I done all this, all I wanted was a nice figure. Mm-hmm. I'd lost my figure. Yeah. So it went the other way. Like. Mm-hmm. But I'm not obsessed with it anywhere. Like I don't, I don't. If I don't exercise, you know that I exercise like that to burn calories. But I'll do like some weights. But if I don't do it the night before, I'm still going to do it the next day. Yeah, aye. It's almost like you just you, you grew in and you sort of fell back in love with yourself. And oh, aye. Did you, did you you've feel got to. You've got to. And that takes. I, I'm no like. I wouldn't say. Um. Oh, that's me. I'm fixing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I suppose you could get back to it any time, because it has only been a couple of years. You've mm-hmm. got to mind that's at least. 15 years of doing that you're not just going to be better I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say oh I that's me I'm fine like I, I mean I'm much stronger mm-hmm. and like my whole mindset is totally different so I I, I think I, I mean I know I don't think I'm going to go back to that I, I really don't but you can't you just say to somebody well once you you're put weight on that's you you're fixed aye no that that comes away done it's that's a constant, the, it's a that constant happens thing. first aye that happens first but it's up there You've got to change. Mm-hmm. That's amazing, isn't it? That connection that exists between the mind and yep. the body. It's like it's mm-hmm. like you said, if you know, you know, wherever your body is, it's ultimately about the importance mm-hmm. of looking after your mind. Yep. I think the the one thing I really love about the stuff that you do often is you you share, mm. like you know, through social, mm-hmm. um, and I think you are within within your circle. You're mm-hmm. always keeping awareness about you know the journey that you've mm-hmm. been on, and and I think that's really powerful, especially from from one woman to to mm-hmm. maybe other women out there and mm-hmm. guys as well because I actually Mark and me have talked about this quite a few times as well which we found really interesting sometimes we like you know you've maybe had a bit of a rubbish week you've maybe mm-hmm. not wet properly and you know you'll maybe catch yourself in the mirror and go geez I'm, I'm not looking good right now mm-hmm. and then you know like, you maybe have a good week of training you've been getting good night's sleep and all of a sudden you're looking in the mirror and going like oh I look fine but then usually it's like your significant other goes you've not changed no. you're fine Aye. and isn't it just strange how Aye. you know maybe like how you feel about yourself actually can have such an impact on how you see yourself I just don't I try not do that where I look at myself and think I look rough I just mm-hmm. don't want to go back to that yeah, place you've been there so I'll be like oh, I'm fine I'll just sleep better than it I'll just get an early night tonight. I love that that's what? brilliant do you know what I mean superb fantastic well played man <laughs> <laughs> Laura Hawkins is a mum who struggled with weight gain and bullying that went along with it in childhood. After giving birth, Laura piled on more weight and was worrying about her health as a result. And a few years ago, Laura went down an unexpected fitness path to shed the pounds, weight training. More and more women are beginning to catch on to the fact that weight training is a far more effective way of burning fat and reshaping your body than basic cardio like running or jogging. Laura is living proof, but she gained so much more than just weight loss from her strength training sessions in the gym, and here she tells us about it now. We spoke beforehand, you've talked about, uh, I suppose, the challenges you've had around body image and being really self-conscious about 
your body and how you felt about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, tell us when, when that started for you, like what started it? And that started for me probably the later end of primary school. Wow. Um, people who were supposed to be, even friends, um, would, would make comments. And I know kind of kids will be kids and things, like, um, but I feel like we should be taught that words do hurt. Mm -hmm. Like, that saying of sticks and stones will be good ones, but words will never hurt me, yeah. is one of the biggest lies I've ever heard because okay. words cut deep. Mm -hmm. And lived me for a very long time, so I used to get cold fat basically um, through, through the end of primary school, but simply because I wasn't stick thin, no, I wasn't fat by any means. Okay. Um, and I can say that now, looking back, but at the time, that stuck with me and, and there wasn't, at, at the time, with my age, there wasn't very much I could do to, to change that for me, sort of thing. Um, so then, can I progress through maybe high school? Wasn't as bad. Um, I, th I suppose that the older I got, the, the kind of, obviously, you weren't even bullied as much and things like that, but those thoughts on your body image definitely stick mm -hmm. and that stuck for me. Um, so did you feel like you know you went through maybe like a teenage years and stuff where you're feeling you know like maybe a sense of discomfort with your body? Definitely, definitely I always compared myself. I would always and it, it probably didn't help that my friends were all kind of quite tiny. I was always the fat friend. Um, and happily enough I'm not the fat friend. Not that I'm saying anybody else is, is fat but I'm yeah. not that person anymore. Yeah. Um, so, I would always, I mean I've been going in and out of the gym since I was maybe 15 um, and yeah I didn't know very much about kind of calories and things like that back then and I would really restrict my calories to try and lose weight and exercise quite a bit, probably in a very unhealthy way. But at the time, that was the only way I knew how to try and change the way I look. Well, I'd met my, my now husband, um, and at the time, I was maybe a size 12, let's say, maybe a 12 stone, and roughly what I am now, basically, and at the time, I thought I was, I was really fat. And I couldn't believe my luck that somebody had had chose me, if you like, and fancied me and things like that. Um, so we get settled and we get married and we had, had two kids. Um, and in the space of the past 10 years, so we've been together 10 years, I put on about six stone, maybe say in that amount of time, which maybe doesn't sound like a lot for 10 years time, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. took its toll, especially with two pregnancies very close together in there <laughs> and I never really gave my body a chance to lose that weight um, so I kind of gave up on myself, if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, kind of stopped doing my hair, stopped wearing makeup, my focus was the kids I just I just didn't care, like, care about my image anymore I just yeah. kind of felt like, well I'm me and that's it sort of thing um, and then I suppose the turning point for me was I'd had my two kids and within about a year the two of them get their autism diagnosis. Okay. Um, and I remember kind of walking into the GP surgery and they've got big massive glass doors and I see my reflection and I just I was really shocked at how much I'd let myself go mm -hmm. and it was as if I was just seeing myself for the first time. It was, I, I probably actively avoided looking at myself in mirrors and I knew at that point something had to change. Like, I kind of knew that I just, I needed to start looking out for me again and, yeah. and doing something for me. Um, so it's almost like... Seems like maybe just at that point, it was like a moment, an inflection point almost of, you know, like you recognised that you know, the way that you've been living your life is not sustainable. Yeah, and yeah, and if I'd kept going, like, by all means, it would have probably killed me. And <laughs> when I look back now, like, as I say, I, I kind of knew I had to change, not just for myself, but for my kids. I'd started attending the local council gym focused more mainly on cardio and I lost about three stone 
my body image, my body shape didn't change in any way. But I was, I was really proud of myself for losing those three stones and it gave me a bit of a boost in things. But the fact that my dress size didn't change was kind of very demotivating. I was a bit kind of like, okay. hmm, it's a bit gutting. So I kind of knew I had to kind of then do something else. Um, and I'd done kind of personal training years and years and years and years ago, <laughs> back when I was a teenager. And I thought, right, okay, we'll give that a go again, because I enjoyed that back then. So I'd get in touch with Pamela, because I felt as well I wanted a female PT. Simply because, for me, I feel a female knows what another female needs. <laughs> Not that I'm saying men don't, but women just kind of get it. And so I, I felt more comfortable as well, yeah. sort of thing. Um, and I got in touch with her and came in and done like a consultation. And she was dead positive. And, um, she's like, oh, you, you'll get there, they'll have you there in no time and just kept kind of spurring me on and I always remember the first actual PT session I came into, I was so nervous because it was, I mean the gym wasn't as big as what it is now but yeah. it was quite intimidating um, and I came in and we went through it and I think because it's just doing your PT you kind of, you're just in a wee bubble so you're not really bothered about who's running about you and what's, what's happening um, so then that and when we finished I was just so I was so proud of myself, I was like, I done that, I just managed to do that. And I've been training now with Pamela for just over a year, mm-hmm. give or take, yeah. something like that. And um, I kind of get the feeling now, like, see if I'm able, like, so we're focusing more on kind of lifting heavier. Um, strength training. Strength training. And I, I feel like if you can lift something kind of really heavy, mm-hmm. That gives me the boost that I can do anything. If I, if I can move that amount of weight, I can do anything. Yeah, sort I like of that. Thing. Um, and it's it's definitely so. I lost another three stone. Wow. Being here with Amazing. Pamela, and um, so I'm now back down to twelve stone. Back what I was ten years ago when I thought I was fat, <laughs> and I look at myself now and I'm like. Wow, that's that's crazy that you that you use. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still have fat days, and I still look in the mirror and go, "Oh, there's a lot that can be improved." But I now look in the mirror and go, "Well, I would rather be this fat than what I was when I started." Um, and it's taken a long time for me to mentally get there. Like for a long time, I'd still look in the mirror and be like, "Nah, you're still that same fat person." Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's it's difficult to come away from that. Sometimes I do feel like um, no matter how much I lose, my mind will never catch up. Yeah. I'll never kind of see myself as, as enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and Pamela's been helping me kind of come away from that and change my thought process on that and be like, no, you, you actually look okay. And mm-hmm. Taking photos and things, progress, and being able to kind of compare really helps as well. It helps you see the journey that you can Yeah, and it helps kind of see the, see the difference, I suppose. Um, I suppose if you look at yourself every single day, you're not going to see that. Mm-hmm. And even now when I compare pictures, just weeks apart, you can you can see progress and kind of building muscle and things. That's what I want now. I'm Good. like, I don't want to be skinny. That's that's not what I want to be anymore. Well, I want to be strong. Yes. I, I, want, I want people to look at me and be like, yeah, that's not something I want to mess with. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, I don't want to be skinny. That's, that's not my aim anymore. Mm-hmm. Neither is. And I can't actually tell you when my thought and that changed. Probably when I did start in this gym, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How important is the idea of taking personal responsibility? That's something that I ask because it's kind of at the very heart of what we are trying to do in terms of raising awareness about, you know, you can change, but to do that, it takes a level of personal responsibility. Mm-hmm. What's your what's your views on taking that taking charge of your health and well-being? Yeah, I mean, I get a lot of people saying to me now, um, "Oh, I wish I could take a bit of your insp- like take a bit of inspiration from you and a bit of your motivation to do it." And I'm kind of like, "You can do it. You just you need to want to do it for yourself." Um, for long, I knew for long enough I was putting on weight. And people would say to me, even my parents and things were saying, were getting a bit concerned that, that I was kind of getting that that kind of far into it and um, didn't matter, it didn't matter, it had to, my mind had to click that that's what I had to do sort of thing, um, I had to see it for myself I think is the main thing um, and I knew I kind of, nobody was going to do it for me, do you know what I mean, I'd, I could go one of two ways, I could either continue 
eating and not exercising and just continuously gaining the weight, probably becoming seriously unwell with it, or just suck it up and get into a gym. Because back then it was more a case of like, it was a chore. Yeah. I had to go and do it because I had to lose the weight. And now it's, I enjoy it. It's, it's, it's so good, it's so fun actually when you, when you get that progress. Mm-hmm. And um, some people that I speak to are, are really, really nervous about, um, and have a lot of anxiety about coming into a gym, especially at, at like a weight training gym. And it's like, I have those same anxieties. And just just get through the door, because you'll notice it's, everybody is encouraging and everybody does support you. Um, nobody cares mm-hmm. what you're getting up to in the gym, because I know that's a big thing for a lot of people. Oh, but people will be looking at me and people will be judging me. Most people are so focused on what they're doing mm-hmm. and their progress, yeah. they're not interested in what you're up to. Do you believe that the, you know, the work you've done on being strong, changing your body, taking responsibility, do you believe that's had a positive effect on your mindset? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I've got more confidence in myself, like, I'll do things now, like, even this interview, I would never have done this a year ago, yeah. I would even have sat here and spoke to you, I'd be like, no, not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got a lot more confidence in myself, um, even just, like, clothes that I wear, I'm not hiding away anymore, um, I can of when I can go into a shop and look at something and go, do you know what, actually, that would go, look okay on me. I don't need to, to totally cover up. It's a knock-on effect on my relationship with my husband. He now strength trains. Really? So he does. Um, he, a bit like me, got a bit comfortable and put on a bit of weight. And now he's training in here and enjoys it. And he's pretty much where he wants to be every time we go into lockdown. <laughs> And then he's like, oh, well, start again. But So he enjoys that. Um, been able to look after my kids. Been able to just run about after them on a daily basis. Because, I mean, having two autistic children is very, very tired. Um, and I definitely noticed it. Like, I could, I could barely move. That sounds awful saying that now. But I could barely even get up off the sofa and do anything with them. And now I've got more energy to even just kind of get down on the floor and play with them. And... Um, just, just happier in general, I would say. Like, um, it's definitely kind of made me feel stronger in the sense of what I can do on a daily basis. Like, it motivates me more. There'll be other people out there, might be in the place that you were in in the past, or if you reframe it, even it could be you know you're talking to your old self. But what advice would you give to your old self or someone else out there? who might be in the place you were in before, what advice would you give? Two or three things that you would say in order to help them get out of that place? That what people say isn't always true. And just if you're wanting to make a change, then be committed to it and actually do it. Like seek the advice, seek help. If if you don't know how to do it yourself, there's plenty of people out there that that can help you and won't judge you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and once you do, you will be so much happier um, and you will change the way you think about a lot of things. Pamela Thompson is the personal trainer who helped Laura kickstart her self-transformation. Pamela coaches women in weight training at Gym 1 in Dumbarton as it's a very effective way of not only burning fat but toning the body. Pamela helps women work in their bodies but also helps them work on their self-acceptance and strengthening their mindset. And by strengthening their bodies through lifting weights, women ultimately strengthen their minds too. Obviously we're covering the topic this week on body image, um, especially around ladies and and obviously being really self-conscious around their body and I suppose how they feel about themselves because it's all interrelated. You obviously are training lots of women on a regular basis. Yes. What's the sort of common themes you find when people come to you in the beginning looking for personal training around body image? Usually um, it relates to the stomach area. Um, most most females are always looking to lose weight from their tummy area. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of questions about cellulite as well and what's the best way to get rid of that. Um, 
In general, the majority of them it is to do with surrounding fat loss. Mm-hmm. I, I get a lot of people that contact me, but they don't necessarily actually make it down to the gym um, to, sp- to even speak to me. So the biggest thing I do when I first get an inquiry about um, personal training is I encourage them to come and meet me first, just to have a chat, just to see if they're ready yet to actually step foot in the gym, because that's probably the biggest hurdle um, that, I, that, that I find with people as well. It's that confidence um, of walking in the gym. People feel that everybody's just their eyes are on them, um, and that's the biggest concern with getting them down here initially mm-hmm. to train. Once I get them down here and they feel a bit more comfortable with myself, then after that, you know, it makes it a lot, a lot simpler. Um, it, but getting some of the girls to be able to come in here and train actually on their own without my help um, is probably like the, the most work that I'm having to put in with people. You've been on your own journey yes. you know, as well. Um, I think it would be good for you to share some of that, you know, because there's a lot of wisdom in the conversations that we've had before. Basically, I started maybe weight training um, just after I had my son, mm-hmm. and I think that was a big, big change in my life. Um, prior to that, um, I, w- I wasn't happy in my life for a long time, and that kind of stemmed from school. Um, as a lot of people do, their, their issues come from school. From school, um, I got quite a hard time off of people and it was more about the way that I looked and I carried that on through um, most of my 20s. And the, the way that I dealt with that was by not talking about it um, and by going out partying mm-hmm. and drinking and that was the only time that I felt actually good about myself. Um, so the big turning point really was um, when I had my son, obviously, there's not the option there to drink away your problems. You're a lot more aware of yourself and started to learn a bit more about myself. I was obviously overweight for um, a lot of my, my 20s. Um, and then I started to read a lot of books, um, a bit more about mindset and about weight training and, and how to fuel your body. Um, so I started weight training um, in my early 30s, um, basically just from going to classes, learning the basics of doing squats and deadlifts and things like that, and then just took that away onto the gym floor. So initially when I started going to the gym, I was so timid, I was so nervous, that same feeling that everybody gets where um, they feel that everybody's looking at them. Pamela told us that she encourages her clients not to judge themselves or judge their fitness progress based on just what the scales say they weigh. Instead, she tells people to measure their progress and self-development based on how they feel, their strength levels, their energy levels and how their confidence rises with dedication to their training. 